So here it is, the Toshiba Satellite 2675 DVD in all of its glory. This is the laptop I used in college. Let's look at some of the I.O. So on the front we have a floppy drive, a DVD-ROM drive, on this side we have the power button and notice it's very easy to press so there's actually a lock mechanism so it'll prevent you from accidentally bumping into it and oddly enough there's a reset button on this side so on the back we have a parallel port a VGA port a serial port PS2 mouse keyboard and power input and I'm not sure what this screw is here. It's just a random screw. Um, but also, what's nice is that it has a USB port. Uh, I don't remember if this is USB 1.0 or 2.0, but there's one there. On this side, we have PCMCIA with a 10 slash 100 network card, uh, volume control, analog volume control, headphones, microphone, jack, and a TV output port, which is very interesting, and a built-in uh, 56K modem. So the battery easily comes out and is user replaceable. It's just sitting in this little plastic tray here. And if we take a look, it's a 10.8 volt at 4,000 milliamps or four amp hours. So it is a lithium ion. So given that this is probably about 20 years old, I'm guessing it would not hold a charge anymore. I do have the power brick, although it is kind of in poor shape and I need to take this uh, zip tie off that's holding the cables together. And this laptop was originally designed to run Windows 98 or Windows NT, which were very popular at the time. And it is a Pentium 3 processor. So that was pretty powerful at the time that it came out. And another thing that's nice is these uh, speakers actually have a pretty decent base for uh, the size of this computer. Well, you can see the little BIOS here. So as you can see, there's not much you can really do here. It's like I have 196 mem megabytes of memory, so this must have been upgraded at some point. I don't think it originally came with that much. Okay, so this is what the LCD stretch does. Um, let's just leave that on for now, since I'll make it easier to see on video. Okay, so this is what I was talking about with the switches in front. You can um, turn this on to... Uh, play a CD. So you can actually have the laptop with the operating system off and you can actually play an audio CD um, in that state. So I don't know, let's try saving these changes. And it's going to reboot. Hey, Windows 98. I'm going to use the CD-ROM drive here to install some USB device drivers. So here's what the USB port looks like. It's, this is the only one. It has like a little door. It's, it's kind of weird. So yeah, it looks like the USB drive works. It shows up as this uh, removable disk E. Um, so let's see. Is this the full version? I have to put it under a games subdirectory. You know what? I didn't even look at the disk space to see if there's enough room for this. Some Quake isn't going to take that much.
Notice it says Quake for DOS. So there is actually an executable you can run to um, run Quake within Windows. And I don't know if that's included. Pro probably not. I think it came out later from id. So we may install, want to install that, but I think we can still run it from within Windows. So this is a fresh install. Oh, what's Q launch? Huh. Well, it's just like, oh, Quake for TCP IP. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. Whoa, okay. Let's turn that down a little bit. I mean, it looks like it's running pretty well. The audio isn't, the, the CD audio is, I can't really hear, hear it. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any CD audio. I can see the CD-ROM drive is spinning. The, the light on the front is flashing. Um, so maybe we need to go into here. Okay, now I can kind of hear it. Yeah, it's kind of that creepy um, ambient music. So controls. I'm gonna to have to fix these because I'm I use um, ESDF typically. Oh, they didn't even have WAS WASD controls. Wait, that's um, actually I want to delete that. I'm probably playing this with the little joystick. Oh, see, it doesn't. Um, by default, it's not set up to look up and down. You probably can't see the screen very well. There's not really much I can do with that. So this is the downside of this laptop is the, the display technology um, isn't very great. And as far as I know, there aren't controls on the keyboard for adjusting the contrast, which is unfortunate. Maybe I'm just missing it here. Is it this one? No, that's not a lot. Yeah, so it's kind of bad. But you know, you could always hook this up to an external monitor and, and play it. And these resolutions are so strange too. So let's try a higher, oh gosh, that's not good. I think I messed it up. Oh good, this reset. Let's turn the zombies down. But yeah, obviously, it's it's even easy to, to see from here that you th this game would be very difficult to play on this laptop with this screen. Um, so you probably want to oh, all the settings are reset. Yeah, so you probably want to um, hook it up to a monitor because again, I don't think there's anything you can do. So. I think 320 by 240 should work because that's a pretty standard resolution. Oh, it actually cuts off. Um, I bet you if we exit and then restart it, we can probably do 320 by 240 because that's a little more of a, the, the correct aspect ratio for this screen. Um, let's look at the screen really quick. Oh, yeah, 800 by 600 is the um, native resolution. Uh, oh, we can go true color. Okay. Probably, you know, on, on these old laptops, you probably wouldn't want to do um, true color very much because it, it does reduce performance a, bit, a little bit. 
Um, and day to day, you're not going to really notice um, issue. But what's cool is you can actually support um, uh, two monitors at the same time. So you can actually go dual monitors. Uh, we could actually increase the resolution, but what that's going to do is it's going to put it into a panning mode, which is very annoying to um, to deal with. So let's see if that 320 by 240 resolution stuck with it. Oh no, it didn't. It reset. Okay, so we have to mark it as a default. I think by hitting D. So I set that as the default. But yeah, definitely having that 196, 92 megabytes of memory definitely helps um, this laptop quite a bit because it doesn't have to really load anything back from the hard drive. And yeah, it looks like that mode is not going to work. It's, it is definitely um, cropping. It's definitely cropping the top and the bottom. Um, we can test one of these other modes, maybe. Yeah, that's weird. That one also gets cut off. That one's just jacked up. <laughs> so that's what happened to us before. Luckily, you know, I'm just using the test mode. So we'll test the rest of these and see if any of them... Ooh. That's not good. Probably if I, I turned off display scaling, these would probably work, but um, again, it's going to be in a very small window in the center of the screen. So it looks like 320 and 20 by 200 is really the only one that this laptop really um, will recognize and work correctly. Yeah, see, these are going to be, um... oh wait, oh no, this is the full version, so that's weird. I don't know why it told me to, yeah, I'm trying to play this with the keyboard and the track point. It's not going to work very well. Ouch. Okay. Yeah, I can hook up a mouse at some point to this. I just need to... Um figure out the USB situation, if I can put a hub and a, and a, and a USB mouse, if that's going to be compatible. And of course, we have all the wonderful um, Windows 98 screensavers. This one was always interesting. And of course, a screensaver on a laptop is really pointless, so you would definitely um, Never really use one because it's just going to drain your battery. And this one always seems to be popular with people. So I guess this also has um, Microsoft Plus screensavers. I do. I don't remember this one. This random jungle foliage and creatures, I guess. Oh, this one actually has music. Oh, nice. Spooky bats, I guess. Yeah, just your basic fish screensaver. It's kind of weird the background is black though. I don't really get that. Okay, so one thing I want to try, since this screen is kind of dim for dark games like Quake, we're going to look at one of my favorites, Age of Empires 2. Ah, doesn't fit. 
Okay, I'll just do... You can actually do direct um, TCP IP connection um, on a local LAN. Uh, that may be something I'm gonna try with, uh, let's turn this down. That, that may be something I'm gonna try with uh, some of the other old laptops I have. Uh, just to demonstrate how you could do kind of LAN parties back in the 90s with just a, a local area network, um, which was kind of a cool thing. So, you know, using modems, I actually did play with my friends uh, using modem, but it, it's just there's so much lag. It, it, it's not so bad with this game that it doesn't work, but it is more frustrating. Um, it's definitely fun if you can do a local LAN game. So we might try that. Um so I don't know, we could do the the learn to play tutorial. Come on. It's I think it's having trouble with the CD drive. Hello. Okay. It's completely frozen up here. Do Yeah, shoot. Okay, let's try restarting. Maybe I got confused because I went into the network settings. Okay, so it works. Yeah, I don't know why I locked up there. I guess it didn't like the um, the networking. Oh no, crash to desktop. That's not good. Oh, interesting. There's extra game previews on this disc. That might be fun to look at. Oh, it's just taunting me with Age of Empires 2. Surely this game can run. So this game runs just fine. I don't even remember how to play it. But yeah, Age of Empires, the original one. Um, oh, you can only do one at a time. Yeah, I mean, it looks fine. So I think we need to build a granary next to the Pushes like that. Oh man, this game is rough. You have to micromanage everything, and that's kind of hard to do with a trackpad. Man, where do I get wood? What? Surely there's some wood on this map. Ooh, can I get that elephant? Oh, there's lots of elephants here. Oh no, run! This guy needs to help out. Run, run, run! Oh gosh, he's gonna die. He died. Okay, this was a terrible idea. Whew. But yeah, I don't know what's up with the spawning of this map. There's like no wood. Oh, here it is.
course, I don't have enough wood for it now. What? Why is this guy here? Get him. Get him. Oh, maybe that was a bad idea. Well, we killed him. Uh, I'm gonna have to think about more food sources here. Oh, you know what? I should have... I should have deleted that. You know what? I'm gonna send them all there. And have them all collect... Oh gosh, you guys! You guys are so lazy, just do it. I need more houses. Not enough wood. This guy over there. Okay, can we build? Wow, that's a lot of elephants. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna do a second part where I look at the game Half-Life and Unreal Tournament to see how well they perform on this laptop.